then the question I think becomes, what is the best approach here? And I think that's a serious question because I really don't know. And I know it's weird to hear me admit that I don't know because I don't do that all that often. But on this, I'm not sure what the correct approach is. And the reason that I say that is I'm just a little shaky on d do you come out guns a blazing on this? Do you you try to send them a softer approach? I'm not sure. Because obviously we have to stand for the truth. You never sacrifice truth for any reason. But to practice the truth in love, I'm not sure what the best approach is when somebody comes out in a very public way. Now, in a private way, if someone came to me and, and talked to me about struggling with the sin of homosexuality, or if somebody wasn't struggling or didn't perceive themselves as struggling with it and came out very proud about it, I think I have a better handle on how to handle that one-on-one -on -one confrontation. But the question is, based on the way that we could respond in a public way with a public figure like that as conservatives and, and as Christians, I don't know. I'm not sure that, I'm just not sure if, if going about it in a way that, that you go in and talk about how it's wrong and sinful and, and abhorrent to God, I'm not saying that you sacrifice any of the message but I'm not sure what approach is most effective in bringing people closer to Christ here. And so I, it, it really is a question that I have sort of wrestled with. And I think that a lot of that depends on how Pete Buttigieg himself views it, because I think there's a couple of different option, uh, options here. There is the possibility that Buttigieg actually does care what the Bible says and is just misinformed on it. And even though this seems like it couldn't happen, I actually have had a friend one time that got on this subject. This was back when I was in college. And I brought up 1 Corinthians 6 and the first chapter of Romans and Jude and the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, several different verses. Also, you could look at Leviticus. Several different verses all throughout the scripture that specifically condemn homosexuality. And this is a guy that wasn't terribly religious, but he wasn't exactly biblically illiterate either. And he told me, and was being honest, he said, I didn't know that the Bible actually explicitly said homosexuality was bad. I always just kind of operated under the assumption that they inferred that based on the biblical definition of marriage. Which, by the way, if that was the only thing we had in Scripture, that wouldn't be incorrect to do. If it said, this is marriage and this is the only place that sexuality can occur correctly in the eyes of God, then it would not be incorrect to assume that anything that varies from that would be incorrect. But he didn't know that the Bible actually explicitly said homosexuality was bad. And so even somebody that lived in the Bible Belt their entire life and was around religious people his whole life had never heard that the Bible specifically condemned it. So I'm not saying there's no value in bringing those verses up. I'm not saying there's no value in using this as a teaching moment for other people about the evils and the detriments of homosexuality. But I'm also saying that how but a judge views it himself matters in this because if he does care what the Bible says and is just ignorant of it, then that's a very different approach. But I'm guessing, I'm guessing that he, like most people that take this stance, understands that the Bible does explicitly and in no uncertain terms condemn homosexuality and just doesn't care. Now, again, it could be the other way around. I don't know. But it seems to me, based on the way that he said it, it's more of a, I realize the Bible says it's wrong, but I don't care what the Bible says. And he specifically said in his statement that uh, being in a marriage, not the biblical definition of marriage, but a marriage to another man has made him a better, more compassionate person and even went so far as to say that it has brought him closer to God. That's why I say it seems as though he tends to be more in the second camp, which is, I know what the Bible says, I just don't care. And the reason that is so incredibly dangerous is because, first of all, 
It is the epitome of pride. And there are other people that think this way about it too. I've run into other people, gay or just people that happen to agree with the gay agenda that take this stance on it. They essentially have so much pride within themselves, they assume that they know more than God. They assume that God, that, that is what the Bible says, that the Bible does condemn homosexuality, but God got it wrong. God made a mistake. Or somebody writing the Bible at some point made a mistake, and the Bible is not God's inherent divine word. And so those are people that do not respect the authority of the Bible, and with those people you have to take a very different approach. Because you can't just give them a verse and say, see, you, you happen to be misinformed on this. With them, you have to actually go back to the basics and the understanding of the inerrancy of God's word. And, and really, you have to go a lot further back and there's a lot more groundwork to lay before you get to the point to say, the Bible says this, therefore it's wrong. You have to explain why the Bible is right. And so there's a lot more legwork to do there. And that's why I think that Buddha Judge probably winds up more in that camp than the, the other one that we were talking about. And the reason this is also incredibly dangerous thinking is because it would be so easy to justify literally any sin this way. Because if the Bible doesn't matter and you just make up your own morality as you go along, then you could justify literally any sin. Let's say, for example, since we're talking about the realm of sexuality anyway at this point, Let's say that a man is having an affair, cheating on his wife, maybe even cheating on his wife with somebody else's wife, so she's married and he's married, and they're sleeping with one another. Well, I don't see why, if you're using this logic, why that would be any different than justifying homosexuality in this way. It's what I want to do, and God made me this way. This guy could have said exactly the same thing, except insert adultery wherever he said, homosexual or gay. Well, I've always had a strong sexual appetite, and I was made this way. God made me to be in adulterous relationships, and having an affair actually brought me closer to God, and having an affair made me a more compassionate, sympathetic person. And I'm, you know, my wife and I were always fighting, and there were problems with the kids, and now I'm in a better mood and everything works out just fine. And so really, it's okay that I do adultery and God is fine with it and it's brought me closer to God. You see how you can take literally any sin and insert it into that statement and justify anything. That's how you know that it's a really bad argument. Because if that's the case, then there are no rules. If the Bible doesn't matter, then how do you know that it's right about God? How do you know that it's right about anything? That's the can of worms that you wind up opening when you go down that path of saying that, no, the Bible doesn't matter, and wherever the Bible contradicts what I want to believe, I'm just going to rewrite that part. You can't pick and choose what parts you like about the Bible. Nobody likes to love their neighbor. I mean, that's a hard thing to do. Nobody enjoys having to love their neighbor, but they do it because they understand that the Bible contains the wisdom in the mind of God. And so that's something that you have to realize is that you either have to take the Bible as it is, the whole thing, or reject it. There is no halfway point with God. There's not, well, I, I sort of follow the Bible on the things that I personally like, and then just kind of ignore the parts that I don't. That's not the way this works. And so I do think that there is some value in pointing that out. I don't know, maybe he's been reading the Social Justice Warrior Bible. Uh, you know, the, the bit that I do with Gregory Post. Maybe he's been reading that Bible. The reason that I actually have the Social Justice Warrior Bible is to point out exactly the flaw in the logic that we're talking about. That essentially my personal preferences trump God's commands for me. And the hilarious part of this is that but a judge said to Mike Pence, your problem is not with me, your problem is my creator, with, with my creator because God made me gay. Well, first of all, nobody, God didn't make you have sex with a man. I think that there are people with certain inclinations. I think that there are people that struggle with some sins more than others. I know there are certain areas that I struggle with that my brothers and sisters in Christ may not. 
And I do think that there are some natural tendencies that certain people have and others don't that may make them more susceptible to sin. But at the end of the day, you still make your own decisions. All sex is a choice. Homosexual sex, heterosexual sex. All of it is a choice. You always make, I mean, unless rape happens, but that's not really the same thing that we're talking about here anyway. It's still a voluntary action that you choose to engage in. And so if you are committing it in a sinful way, in a way that God would not have approved, then that was, by definition, still a choice. Maybe you have tendencies towards a perverted way or an incorrect way, but that doesn't mean you have to act on it. And that's the, pro that, that's the reason that I use the Social Justice Warrior Bible parodies, the sketches, as sort of a way to exemplify that. That the way that you want the Bible to read is not the same as the way the Bible actually reads, and there's a reason that you're supposed to respect that standard. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.